All right, I was still live here at the Arise Media Center, uh, the Future Investment uh, Initiative uh, Summit in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. My guest, Amin Abaka, Senior Research Analyst at uh, Ikinam Atta Energy Intelligence, and she's got the whole economics and all that of energy together. Great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank for you so me. much. I mean, great. I'm very interesting. Three days here in Riyadh, uh, from Dubai, where you, you're based. What's in, in this summit for you? Talk to me. I've been to all the FII summits, so uh, this is the eighth one. This is the eighth one, exactly. And I think this year is very interesting because there is a clear focus uh, from the Saudi side to invest more domestically in the market. We heard from the head of the PIF, uh, Yasser Romayan, yesterday. Mm. PIF is the Saudi um, sovereign wealth yes. fund. Uh, the size of the fund is over nine um, nine hundred billion uh, dollars. Mm. So you can imagine when they say something, people know want to know where they're investing. And they're investing more but, domestically. But, but, but the PIC says it's slowing down a little bit on its investment. They are um, trying to reduce the investments internationally, which mm. are currently 30%. Mm. They're going to take that down to 18 to 20%. Mm. So more focus on the domestic market and areas mm. that are of interest include energy transition projects, mm. but also AI. Energy, energy, energy. Are there lessons uh, as, an, as, as, uh, as, as someone who sits every day in the, on the world of energy intelligence in terms of what the lessons are from Saudi Arabia in terms of energy sustainability, uh, trying to move from fossil fuel and holding the hands of clean energy at the same time moving forward? I think Saudi Arabia is taking a very pragmatic uh, approach to the energy transition. They don't view it as a transition, they view it as an addition. And mm. they are very mindful that the transition needs to be a just one. Uh, not just uh, transitioning and not putting into accountability the affordability element and the security of energy worldwide. Mm. Uh, they were being a voice for the global south and many of the producing states that still want to make use of their oil and gas. They're very mindful mindful of that and what they're doing and when I, when I mean a pragmatic strategy they're still maintaining their uh, upstream capacity which is around 12.3 uh, million barrels a day and at the same time they have a two track to invest in renewable energy so by 2030 they plan to have their domestic energy mix as 50% from renewable 50% from gas that would free up oil for them to export so I see it as a very comprehensive and uh, pragmatic approach to the transition. Would you say, I mean, uh, that this perhaps is the way for Africa to go in terms of leveraging fossil fuel and other forms of uh, classic energy, in a manner of speaking, and talking about the new bride that renewables represent? Absolutely. And you asked me about the lessons learned from Saudi Arabia. And yes. I think one lesson learned is to take a pragmatic approach. Africa should not be intimidated by the voices telling them, do not extract your oil and gas from the ground. You should keep it in the ground mm. and you should move it immediately into renewable energy. But who's going to finance this renewable energy? How do you ensure that your population grows and has the means to, uh, to grow? You need that energy. You need all types of energy, not just the upstream, but the renewable and possibly the nuclear so this is the way to go and the correct approach I'm sure you've seen the, the latest uh, I'm sure you had the latest IEA and OPEC uh, report for, for for last month in terms of global energy demand for fossil fuel are you worried by the numbers in terms of demand flagging some wealth across major consumers worldwide I'm worried about the numbers because with, we still have huge gaps in uh, what both organizations are seeing. Mm -hmm. You see OPEC on the very, very bullish side in terms of demand and the IEA on the extreme side, which makes me think that, I mean, there is a large degree of uh, politicization of, of both numbers. It, they're not uh, being true to fundamentals <laughs> somehow. So we need to go back to the basics and look at where the fundamentals are. I, I got that. Yes, yes. Get get to the basics because the the real number, the fundamentals don't, don't lie. There's still a huge demand for fossil fuel, globally speaking. Would you agree? The U.S. is still producing fast and furious. North. Northern America, Norway and, and others. So do you think that Africa should uh, move also in that direction, still do a little bit more of extraction? In what regions in Africa are you looking at? 
there is definitely more demand for oil. We might not see the same level of demand, for example, in the transport section, but this oil will be needed in pet chems, specialty chemicals, so more on the downstream side. So is there demand mm. for oil? Yes, absolutely, there's a demand for oil. And African producers, I mean, the big rising star everybody talks about now is Namibia. I mean, this is something that we're watching very closely, but as well, Nigeria has huge uh, potential. We're hearing many companies that have attended uh, the FII saying that they want to start ramping up their, uh, their production. So for Africa, there are many opportunities, and I think uh, they should move forward with these plans. The, the, the global oil market, the, the 2024 is winding down, and the global oil market, uh, give me a sense of the road we've traveled so far, 10 months to date, uh, and where you, what you think the rest of the year will look like for the, for the global oil market. Um, well, we're in a kind of uh, tricky situation with prices. Yeah. We're seeing prices at a level which are being very much impacted by exaggerated negative sentiment. Um, traders are not mm. putting into account geopolitical factors that don't forget that we're in a major crisis here in the Middle East and you can have an outage of supply. This risk is being discounted completely. And, and why? And why, my friend? I mean, because I'm worried. Good question. Really I'm looking good at question. oil at, at the low end of, uh, of the lower end of the 70s right now. Why is that? You've got a drop of whatever in the Middle East and oil prices usually traditionally fly, but that's not happening again. I think that there is a lot of concern over demand growth looking into next year. Everybody's talking about Chinese mm. demand mm. being a lot softer. I mean, China's mm. a wild card here. They've mm. announced mm. this huge stimulus and we're not seeing the impact yet. Mm. Could we see an upside from China? Absolutely, we can see an upside from China, but the market is not factoring mm. that in. Mm. And I think that the fact maybe uh, due to the, uh, the US elections, there might be an element that there is interest for the U.S. somehow to keep prices uh, at bay during the election. So let's see post-elections how things pan out. Uh, if we go back to the energy transition and climate change, COP29 in Baku, Azerbaijan is just around the corner, just a couple of weeks down the line. So uh, uh, what do you think the key message should be for, for Africa and other fossil fuel producers regarding investments in the sector, what should be the key message uh, that seem to balance out things for both sides of the eye? I think the fact that uh, oil producing states and uh, even inviting companies to attend COP is a very good move because this industry is committing to uh, decarbonizing, unlike other industries. So it's very important to put the message across that they're committed to decarbonizing, maybe sharing plans. I know whenever sh plans are shared by an oil company, you say, okay, no, it's, this is greenwashing, this is nothing. Um, but actual steps that are being taken by, we've seen the giants talk here at FII, Aramco and the others leading the way, showing that it's possible. Technology is aiding this, putting finance behind it, getting these big companies, helping other uh, producers in Africa and other regions, I think is, uh, is going to be beneficial. You're heading to Cape Town, South Africa for the African Energy Week uh, in a couple of days down the line. What will be part of your speaking point uh, to your audience, to your panelists and, and others in terms of uh, what African sovereigns should focus on. For example, Uganda is pushing ahead with the multi-billion dollars East African pipeline. Nigeria wants additional one million barrels of oil on the table. That's there. Then you've got to look at the rest of West Africa and Namibia, as you mentioned earlier, and up, up to the north. So what would be the central message for you uh, in Cape Town? I think the main message is centered around energy security. It comes with responsibility of making sure that these barrels are produced responsibly. And I think I've spoken to many uh, African producers attending the FII. Everybody cares about the environment. Nobody wants to pollute and leave the, this uh, legacy of pollution around for their children and grandchildren. Yeah. So that's really critical for Africa. And we just have to put things into context. Africa has the highest level of population still living in energy poverty. We need to eradicate that. And Africa also as a continent is the lowest carbon emissions compared to all other continents. So this is Africa's time. It's time to Africa's time to blossom, produce, make sure that, you know, everybody is covered uh, in terms of its energy needs. I think that's like the key points to, to take and not to listen to uh, other views saying that, you know, you shouldn't exploit your own uh, resources and, and so on. I think it's, uh, it's not fair.
I'm sure you're preparing for the next FII 9. Absolutely. <laughs> Looking forward to it, always. Great, great. It's nice speaking with you. Thank you thank so you, much. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Uh, I'm in Abaka, uh, the senior research analyst at Energy Intelligence, speaking with us here on Arise News. <laughs>